Welcome to the quick hitter version of Buckets, Boys, and Blocks, along with the great Monica McNutt. I am King McClure. This week, our featured discussion is about the Brooklyn Nets. Can they make it work? Will the NBA be able to have a safe and successful finish? Oh, you teed it up. Let's get to it. Brooklyn Nets finals already? You're, you're in? Bruce gave me that look like I know he didn't just say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. So- I, I, I thought the Nets were a worthy uh, contender to go to the finals before they got James Harden. So, you know, that's the adding Nets, some pretty significant talent there, right? No, nah, the, the, the Nets are good. And I think, like, they'll figure it out. I mean, a lot of people say, like, is there enough basketballs to go around for Kyrie James and Kevin Durant? Like, Kevin Durant, he's played with great players before. He doesn't need the, need, need the, doesn't need the basketball like that. Kyrie's played with LeBron. LeBron takes the ball a lot. He has the ball a lot in his hands and he learned how to play off the ball. So James Harden, a lot of people don't realize like when he gets triple doubles, like he gets like what, 12, 13 assists? James Harden can pass. I think these dudes are pros and they'll figure it out. Like, and Steve Nash is a great coach. So I, I think they'll figure it out. My concern about them, well, I have a few concerns about them. Talent is not the concern. The concern is chemistry, right? I mean, because in James's first two games with KD, I mean, you couldn't have asked for better work out of those guys, right? I mean, two wins. I mean, KD gets 42 and and, and Harden has a triple-double, whatever. Okay, is three going to be a crowd, Monica? I mean, uh, I mean, they only needed one basketball when it was just two of those guys. So what's going on? I mean, I know that's cliche, but what, what what's your take on it? I'm a king. They want to win. They're desperate. They came together for a reason. I think... So personally, I think too much is being made out of this. Yeah. Honestly, like, I can't, Im- this is, if this is the thought process, then the Olympic teams should never work. Yeah, yeah, but the Olympic teams play less talent than the average NBA team as opponents, right? Except for a few countries. Uh, maybe, and but, but the idea that you can't have superstar caliber power together, to me, I just, I think it's been, personally, I think it's been overblown. I'm not saying that this team won't have things that they need to work through, but so does every team. I can't wait to watch the three of them play together because I really just want to see how how they work it. you got three Hall of Fame players there, really. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, KD's already in. If he retired tomorrow, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Harden, same deal. Yeah, and I do. I think I agree with King. Statistically, if you bear it out, James Harden probably is the better passer between um, James and Kyrie. But what what I think people are not crediting or are discounting in this whole situation is none of them have won a title on their own. Mm. And the closest to that would be KD. But I mean, then you remember that he went and joined a Warriors team. Now. Yeah. Just by his sheer talent, you could argue tooth and nail about the talent hierarchy, but he did go and join that team. And so yeah. Kyrie did it with LeBron and James has never sniffed it. So in terms of y'all need to figure this out and now is the time, like I think they get that. And this idea that they're going to have temper tantrums and not know who to throw the ball when they are elite athletes who want to win, I just think is overblown. I mean, I guess another aspect you got to really look at is like at the end of the game, we all know who's gonna get the shot. It's KD. KD, you, you got to give it to him. Like it, that, that's the respect factor. Like the other night, end of the game, KD took the winning shot. James Harden threw it to him. They, I feel like they have that respect. I mean, Kyrie. But here, here's the other thing. Like at the end of the game, like you got three dudes who can get the bucket. Like you, you really don't know. Like yes, KD in, in terms of hierarchy, yes, but you got three dudes on that team that can ice a game in the game at any moment. Agree. Like anything about it. Like they're, they're literally unguardable. So play basketball. That's my thing. Like we're, yeah. they're going to play basketball. Like they're going to hoop. They're going to play bad. They're going to figure it out. Like they, I just feel like they're, they're that talented. And like, like Monica said, it's almost that time. Like if you don't win, your career will be, you know, I think Harden might go down into that category with the mellow category that greatest players to never win. And he's getting close. So um, it's about that time for it. What about, what about the other end of the court, though? I mean, do they, you know, they, they gave up some pretty good, you know, talent, especially, you know, I, I was a big Jared Allen fan. I really liked that guy. He would, he would be uh, somebody that would be, you know, a rim protector, you know, rim runner, rebounder, whatever. 
Now you're relying on DeAndre Jordan, and I don't even know who their backup center is now. I mean, DeAndre's a good player. I mean, is that going to be enough? I mean, what happens if he gets in foul trouble in the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, I'm being a little bit of a devil's advocate. I admit it. I'll, I'll plead guilty to that. But you can't win championships unless you're a really good defensive team, no matter how many points you score. So here's my, here's, here's my, my argument with that. I think um, with Kevin Durant being 6'11", almost 7 foot, I think that just changed like, like like that basically like just changes the whole game for them because I think when DeAndre Jordan goes to the bench, even Steve Nash talked about this early on. He said I, I might play KD at the five, and KD at the five, he's six eleven, so he can go out of five. But then when you look at how the game is being played with the pick and roll, well, you just switch that. So there's no there's no either. It takes away all your pick and roll. You switch that, and with the game primarily being you know a three point basketball game, if you're trying to take advantage of you know, maybe Kyrie on a big, I'm living with you trying to score all them points down low. As long as you, you're not finna score on Kevin Durant though. You're not gonna ISO Kevin Durant and score on Kevin Durant. So I think that kind of like changes the game almost in a sense. They can kind of play positionless basketball one through five when KD's at the five. I think that makes them even more dangerous because once you get that stop, then they gotta go to the offensive end. And when they're on the offensive end, I promise you no team is guarding in that team with Kevin Durant at the five, there's no five in the NBA that's going to guard that. Um, I think that's a great point. And I also think, like, yes, basketball is a simple game, but I, I just feel like these arguments that they're going to work, one, are oversimplified and that they can't, they flat out can't defend is also oversimplified. And even if they can't defend, you're still going to have to match them in scoring. So it's just going to be high scoring affair. <laughs> they still going to score. Right, like... <laughs> It's gonna be one forty to one forty two. Like it is <laughs> the over the the over on every game is three ten. Like and that's okay. Like, it's just the gym. <laughs> Most definitely. But, and, and, and I will say the other night, DeAndre Jordan, uh, my boy Jeff Green, who owes us a pod guest. Appearance. Oh hell yeah! Oh wait a second, absolutely. Like they got Jeff Green on the court. That's another five they can play. And yeah, put him yeah. at the five, and he can switch one through five as well. I be feeling bad for Jeff because he definitely was defending Giannis the other night, and I was like, mm, "Okay, well, you go, Jeff." But he be working. Um, I think they've got. They're, it's gonna listen. Like we just gotta watch. I'm not saying yeah. I'm not ready to say that they're necessarily going to win the title this year, but I expect them to come out the East. Most definitely, I, I 110 percent expect them to come out the East. I, I personally, I'm, if I had to, I, I'm gonna take them to win the title. I just don't think that any other team. Lakers over the Lakers. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> y'all see that video of uh, what's my guy's name? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm 36. I'm 36. That's hilarious. Shout out to him. He's actually from Waco, Waco, Texas. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, Supreme Dreams. This is it. He said, "I'm I'm 36." Like, like, but that's real. I I I don't think LeBron at 36 is gonna be able to beat this super team. He's beat enough. But I don't think he he can he can beat this one. If he I, does, if he does, okay. It, it, if LeBron, if LeBron and and his yeah, cast, yeah. if he does, are we gonna say he's the goat? Yes. Now I I hate to say this, I hate to admit it. Yes, he has to be. If he beats Kyrie, Kevin Durant, and James Harden, you're automatically solidified as the goat. After you beat the super team with uh, Clay, Steph, was yeah. KD on the team too? Katie was no, not there yet. I, no, I don't think so. That was the year before Katie came. But because yeah. that's when they were on, they had won what seventy something games. Yeah. Two games. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That was yeah. He ended the streak. Uh, I agree with you. Definitely would make LeBron the goat. And I think it's not even so much just about LeBron. It's about that entire roster. That like that. If it comes down to Brooklyn Lakers then I think defense does become a conversation because the Lakers to me can score and they will be able to defend. Defend with an asterisk, defend as and make it a little bit more challenging, but you really not going to just damper this firepower that Brooklyn has. But I think that they like that. I, ah, that's the, that probably is the only time that I would lean on continuity and being together a little bit longer. Although this Lakers squad is not the same squad that won the championship last year and probably trends toward the Lakers. If you'd like to hear more, check out the full version of Buckets, Boards, and Blocks from Pure Hoops Media. And you can check out the video version on the Pure Hoops Media YouTube page.